let's take a look at our top selections. Hi everybody, Mike Beer here with a couple of graded stakes actually down at uh, Churchill Downs on Saturday afternoon. And we'll start with the first of those. Race number eight is the Regret. It's a uh, grade three for three-year-old fillies on the turf. They're going to go nine furlongs. Let's take a look at this field right now. Nine three-year-old fillies entered for this regret stakes. It's a pretty good field. Um, I think there's a, a case to be made for several of these horses. All of them, for the most part, have prior stakes experience. Um, you can see that the morning line favorite there, number four, is Spanish Love Affair. Um, we'll get to you know one of the reasons in a second here uh, why she might have an advantage, and maybe that will be all that it takes um, for her to get to the winner's circle against this field. Um, if I'm being honest, she is not a horse that I would be looking to take any kind of a short price on, on in this race. She can certainly win, um, and she's run some good races, but uh, boy, I, I'm not sure that she holds much of an edge over this field for her to be favored. Um, you know, one of the reasons that perhaps she is favored, uh, we'll look at right now, the Time Form U.S. Pace Projector, um, just feels like it's not a blue bar situation. They don't give a, a big advantage to horses on or near the early lead, but they do have Spanish Love Affair as the main speed of this race, and out there on a clear early lead in this spot, that could certainly work to her advantage in here. Um, obviously, getting out in front of a, of a field like this one might be um, a pretty big advantage. And we'll see if she can you know, do something with that if she does indeed get, get loose. I didn't feel like she necessarily had to get loose on the lead. Maybe she will. Um, and maybe she'll just wire this field. Um, I, I didn't really look at the race that way. However, I will you know, obviously note that in her most recent start um, over at Keeneland against a good field in the Appalachian, she... You know, I think you want to give her a pass for that race. She got bumped very hard at the start of that of that race, got knocked off stride, wound up last and on the outside. It's not where they obviously wanted her to be. She never really did any running after that. Um, it was a pretty good field um, with Jouster going right to the front um, and just sort of uh, taking that field all the way around and never giving them any kind of a chance to run her up. Gift List um, came back with a big win of her own on, on uh, Kentucky Derby weekend over at Churchill Downs. So it was a good field. Um, this filly did have a major excuse in that race, but she also didn't do any running two starts back um, when she uh, finished first. And the, here comes the bride at, at uh, Gulfstream Park. She ran well that day, but that wasn't much of a field. Ultimately, um, it was a, you know, a poor decision by her rider. They did not get aggressive with her in there. Got her, she got herself into, tr into trouble. And even though she was much the best, she wound up getting disqualified. Um, they'll go forward with her in here, and maybe that'll be all it takes again. Uh, but she is not a horse I'd be looking to take any kind of a short price on in here because I think there are alternatives. Um, some horses who are, you know, have every right to be at least as good um, at this stage of the game as Spanish Love Affair. As one of those could be Oyster Box, I ultimately couldn't talk myself into her. I liked her first two starts. I thought she ran fine in the Florida Oaks and her um, two starts back down at uh, Tampa. Um, they brought her up to Aqueduct last time to run in the Memories of Silver. She, she, it was a good field. You know, she got... To me, I thought she got mostly a, a pretty good trip in that race, and she was just no match for that field. I was a little disappointed in her effort last time. I'm not sure that stretching out even further has to be a problem for her. I mean, based on her pedigree, um, more distance could be, actually be better for her. She's really bred to go longer, so maybe that will help. I don't know. I, I, I'm still, I don't want to give up on her just yet, but I couldn't talk myself into her in this race. Um, didn't really like the two, Money for Row, who wound up finishing behind a couple of these horses from off the pace last time in an allowance race. The number three, Line Dancing. I think this is a very interesting horse in this race. I've been a fan of hers from the start. I thought her career debut was good. I thought she ran better than it looks, and her only other start as a two-year-old over very yielding turf um, down at Pimlico. Wound up very close uh, contesting the pace in there in a race that went to closers. Um, go back and, and watch her three-year-old debut in the Santa Bell Island on the Gulfstream Park. I mean, I guess the positive view of that race would just be that they were prepping her, um, rated her right back to uh, last on the inside um, at the start, never went for any kind of a run with her, just sat in around the second turn like they didn't even want to get involved, even as, you know, the winner came up and swept by her on the outside. And then they took her clear on the stretch, and she ran on and actually gained up, uh, gained some ground through the stretch of that race. I thought maybe that was a prep. I thought it was, a, even if it wasn't, I thought it was a useful effort off the layoff. She came back in the Edgewood last time. It was a pretty tough Edgewood, even with the uh, favorite uh, in there, Aunt Pearl bombing. Um, the winner of the race was really impressive. Um, and Barista was a pretty good second, too. Barista's also back in this race. But line dancing, once again, I thought a lot of the Edgewood, outside of the winner who just dominated, I thought a lot of the Edgewood also ran's. Um, that race was mostly about position, and I didn't think line dancing got a very good position in that race. They rated her back um, on hold all the way on the outside once again, um, widest at the top of the stretch. She ran on. I thought she was game to get third, but she didn't really have much of a chance in there. I, th I still think there's better to come for this horse. Um, I think she's better than she looks on paper. She's 12-1 to 1 on the morning line, all things that I like. 
Um, definitely a horse I'm using in here. I thought Barista ran well. Barista's the five in here. I thought she ran well in the Edgewood. I can't say that I liked any of her other races. Um, felt like she improved last time. Um, again, maybe that was a race where she was just in the right position. In hand at the start, just sort of raided along in mid-pack, um, ahead of line dancing all the way. Pretty good um, finish of her own for second. I had no chance with Giftless. Pretty good second of her own to, to be a clear second best in there. Maybe she can back that race up. And if she does, she could be tough in here. Um, Post Nup was also in the Edgewood. Um, tried to rally up the inside. I don't know. Her, her, won her She'd won her prior two starts down at the fairgrounds. Ran fine in those races. I thought she had to improve in this race. Gam's Mission um, has won two races in a row for Cherie DeVoe. Um, this is an interesting horse in here. We'll see what kind of price she can get on her. She's run well in all three of her starts so far, but she's two for two as a three-year-old. Very game finishes in her last two races to get up and win both times. Steadily creeping forward on the figures. Feels like there's more to come. She's got a nice pedigree. Plenty of things to like about her. She's five to one on the line, which is nothing to get excited about, but she could take a step forward in here. Flown finished just behind Gam's mission last time. They raided her back. Um, I thought all in all, she had every chance in that race, but she ran well again, um, was gaining ground every step of the way, wound up second best. I thought she ran fine. Um, much like the morning line favorite here, Spanish Love Affair, she ran in the Appalachian off the layoff at Keeneland, and she was another horse. Got bumped very hard at the start, um, wound up back off the pace, but that's more you know her running style at this point. Um, no real threat in there, but she was off the layoff. She could certainly do better in here, and she might be a fair price. The nine is Sarnaya. Um, Saranya, I think this is a very interesting horse in here. Um, in some ways, I feel like she could be the horse to beat, even though she doesn't have figures um, to back up uh, that statement. At this point, um, a bunch of figures in the 70s, low to uh, mid to high 70s at this point. I just think she's pretty good, and she feels like a horse who is learning as she goes. Won two races in a row at Fairgrounds over the winter. One of those on the front end after a stumble at the start, but... Had no trouble getting forward in there. Um, turned away a challenge in the stretch. I thought she was good that day. She came back from off the pace and won again against allowance races, allowance horses. And I, I thought she ran well in that race again because she held her position and then got carried very wide to the stretch, but still came with a really good run um, to outfinish that field. And then in her next start, the first stake start down at the fairgrounds, two starts back, she had no chance in that race. They walked on the lead in front of her in there. She made a good run to be second best in there, but she had no chance to win with the winner just racing loose on a very slow pace in there she ran the appellation last time i didn't think she ran poorly at all i mean she was no match in there after getting closest to joust her on the lead um and she was just no match getting out finished through the stretch by the top three finishers in there but the top three finishers are really really good horses and none of them are back in this spot i thought sarnaya uh, sarania was the horse to beat in this race and i want to use her um, but at the end of the day, the two horses and the only two horses that I really like in the race um, are the three line dancing and the nine Saranya. And uh, line dancing is a much better price um, on the morning line in this race. And it feels like she'll probably be a much better price at post time. So that's why I put her on top. Um, and I went three, nine, seven and one in the grade three regret race number eight um, at Churchill Downs. I only want to use the three and the nine and I won't use anybody else. We'll see how that works out. Race number nine at, at uh, Churchill on Saturday is the regret. Good luck.